Welcome back! You are watching Sliced Lime and this is our beginner commands tutorial series. Last time we started learning about data tags and how to use them to match different objects in the world. We also learned how to use a command block with a simple entity data command in it to find the entire data tag for an entity in the world. As an example we used the redstone torch that just despawned here which is an entity in the world, so it has a data tag. This time we'll continue with data tags and learn how to use them when summoning entities in the world to affect the properties of that entity. To do that, we'll also learn how to read and interpret the big resource I mentioned last time, the Minecraft Wiki chunk format page. Let's get started by taking this block and working on a simple summon command. Let's do summon zombie in a position that is the same as the command block but one above in the y direction. This means the zombie will be standing on top of the command block. Let's run that command only for a start to see how this works without any data tag. The zombie spawns in on top of the command block, immediately starts burning from being in the sunlight and generally behaves as the zombie would. So what can we do to change this behavior? Well, the summon command, if we just type slash summon into the chat, we'll see that it has an entity, x, y, and z, and then a data tag. So let's add a data tag to this command. Now what can we put in this data tag? That is what the chunk format page on the Minecraft wiki will tell us. But for now, let's just start with is baby 1b and see what that does. The zombie is now a baby zombie. Since it is a baby zombie, it also doesn't burn in the daylight. Let's kill our new zombie. And try something else. One interesting and useful tag is the no AI tag. If you set that to be one, the zombie will not have any AI, which means it doesn't do any behaviors. It still burns in the daylight, but it doesn't fall, and it doesn't move, and it doesn't react to any player or anything else in the world. This can be extremely useful if you want to make custom behavior for mobs and don't want the built-in AI to interfere. Let's try a more complicated example. We can add to this command the equipment the zombie has. We do that by adding an equipment tag. The equipment tag is a list, and lists are written with square brackets. A list in itself can contain zero or more data tags without names. In this case, they are full tags, so we'll add curly brackets for the first one. The order of the tags in the list defines which item goes where on the zombie. The first slot is the item held in the zombie's hand. The second one the armor piece worn on the feet, then legs, chest and head. We don't have to specify anything, so we can leave these blank if we wish and simply add more ones. In our case, let's prevent the zombie burning in the sunlight by adding a helmet. That is the fifth and last data tag in the list. The list contains tags in the item format. Last time we used the item format to check for the player holding a quartz block by checking for id colon and then the item id minecraft colon quartz underscore block. This time we're going to use a similar one but instead of quartz block we want minecraft colon iron helmet. The item format also contains several other fields like count which is where you specify the stack size for whatever the item is we're specifying. In this case, we simply want one helmet. There's also the damage field that specifies how damaged or what additional data the item has. We can leave that out for now to give the zombie an undamaged helmet. Let's try to run this and see the effect. We can see that the zombie now spawns with an iron helmet and doesn't burn in daylight. We still have the no AI tag, so it won't act in any way.
Let's kill our friend the zombie and show you another example of how the item format is useful. Let's say instead of a zombie, I would like to summon an item laying on the ground, or in this case on top of the command block. We can reuse this item tag by simply replacing the equipment tag with an item tag. This item tag is not a list but a single item definition, so we'll remove the square brackets and only keep the item tag within it. This is an iron helmet with a stack size of 1. If we run this command, we see that an iron helmet item spawns above the command block, and I can now pick that up. In my inventory, we can see that my iron helmet is a stack size of 1 and it's undamaged. Let's now look at how you can learn what information there is in an entity and what you can change. This is the chunk format page on the Minecraft wiki. It is a very, very long page with tons of information. Let me break that down for you. There is first some overall structure on how the level is stored in the region files. This is generally not of any use for you if you're not using an external editor. Down here, however, we have the entity format section, which is where it gets interesting. If you click on show under entity data, you will get a list of all the information about every single entity in the game. For instance, ID, which is the entity ID. For our throne redstone torch, this was item. And for our zombies, it was zombie. All entities also have positions, motion, rotation, fall distance, fire, air, and so on. Down this entire list. We then get to the mobs section and we have an additional show button that shows all the fields that all mobs have including health, what equipment they have, as we said, and the no AI tag. If we scroll down, we will also see the specific data fields for each type of entity. Let's scroll down to find zombie. Here we can find the isBaby data tag that we used before. It can be set to 1 or 0 to tell if the zombie is a baby or not. But remember that in-game we set this value to 1b rather than 1. This is because the value is a byte. To find out what kind of value it is and thus what way you should write the number, you look at the little picture before the name of the tag. In this case there's a b here, which means you need to have a b after the value. If you hover, you will see that it says tag underscore byte. This tells you the value will be stored as one byte in a file, which also limits what values it can have, which is sometimes important. If we keep scrolling, we'll get to other types of entities, like items. You can see that the item tag is simply documented as C item format. The item format is common enough to have its own documentation on the player page. Here we can find the documentation about the count, the ID, and the damage that we went through. Sometimes items also has a slot. That is the case when you are modifying the inventory of players, entities or blocks with more complex inventories, like chests or furnaces. As you can see, these web pages contain an incredibly large amount of information. I don't recommend that you try to learn it all at once. Instead, bookmark this page and use it to look up the data values available for an entity that you are interested in working with for a specific idea or a specific command. We have now covered all of the basic components needed to make fairly advanced command block systems. While there is plenty of more to cover, there is no real reason to do one command before another. So please let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see as our next step. Of course, also feel free to let me know if you have any questions or need any help. I will see you in the next video, and until then, good luck with your commands.